Hello there and welcome back to another episode of Chemistry and of course in this episode we are going to uh, be discussing proteins, okay? Amino acids, okay? Uh, that is what proteins. Now, do not forget that this tutorial is brought to you by the O3 School Jam CBT Practice App. The app is all you need to succeed in your exam. Let's see a question relating to this from the O3 School Jam app. This is Jam Pass question number uh, uh, number nineteen of twenty twenty three. Okay, it says it says what type of bond links amino acids together in a protein chain? What type of bonds link amino acids together in a protein chain a says covalent bond b says hydrogen bond c says ionic bond d says peptide what bond okay so come back to this question as well as other questions at the end of the class and not before because at all three schools we believe in giving you value first we believe that once we have taught you then answer questions will be the least of your problems okay so please do not forget to download the application it has all the past questions for your needs for all subjects there are lecture notes also lecture notes structured according to the jam syllabus there are wonderful features like the question search feature where you can search for questions just like the way we search for this now you can watch use that feature that feature expansively to study then then there's a mock challenge on the application every Saturday till one week to the main jump exam. In that mock challenge, you compete with all students that are writing jump for this particular year. You win amazing prizes every week. You get used to jump past questions, jump likely exam questions, as well. You see what or familiarize yourself with how jump sets their question, as well as seeing your results release every Saturday, thereby building your confidence towards the main exam. Please head to Play Store immediately, download the application, and activate. Activation fee is not even up to the price of rice and chicken in the in a what in the restaurant in a very good restaurant so please get the app do not be stingy to yourself all right and of course uh the app is available for your android phone it's available for your computer versions okay if you want to download for your computer or for your laptop okay just simply visit o3schools.com slash jam app all right and of course you can send a message to this number on whatsapp 09121515246 in case you want to what get in touch with us to help you with the download for your computer. Now, this is what amino acids we're discussing today. Now, what you should know as a precursor or as a beginning is that what that amino acids are monomers of what or proteins. Okay, so it's just like proteins are what are polymers. Okay, that are gotten from what from amino acids. Okay, so you build up what protein from what from amino acids. So they are the building blocks of what of protein. So proteins are what like a polymer unit. Why amino acids are like what are the monomer what units. So take note of what of that. And of course, it is also. Uh, necessary to know that what that um, an amino acid okay has what a carboxylic group it has a carboxylic group or a carboxyl group okay it has what an amino group okay it has what an R group and an H group okay so this is what will constitute what an amino what acid okay it was it has what a carboxyl group or a carboxylic acid group as you may have it it has an amino group it has what an r group and it has what an h group okay generally they are represented like this you have a carbon being bonded to what a carboxylic acid group okay being bonded to an arrow group upward like this and then being bonded this way to an amino group and being bonded to what to an hydrogen what group okay this negative this of course positive now this is what the representation of an amino acid so once you see a carbon atom being bonded to a carboxylic acid group and an amino group then of course your mind should quickly run to what to an amino what acid okay so this is how it's what it is represented as you can see it is what amphoteric 
it is amphoteric. Amphoteric. That means that what? That it can behave as what? As an acid or as a base. Okay? So it can behave like an acid because of this carboxyl group. Okay? So because of this carboxyl group, it can behave like an acid. And because of this amino group, okay, it can behave as what? As a base. Okay? So generally, we call this what? Ezuiteron. Ezuiteron. Okay, zwitterion. Okay, so now when this uh, uh, when this amino group and what and this what carboxyl group when they ionize, okay, what it forms is what is what is a zwitterion. All right, when they ionize, we form what a zwitterion. So please take note of that. And this uh, compound or this sort of uh, structure, okay, is what is completely what neutral. Is neutral. Why is it neutral? Because it has a positive center here. Yeah, it has what a negative or center. So it will cancel out, and of course, we we'll have what a neutral what atom. Okay. So please take note of all of these. Now, what makes a carboxy? What makes what an amino what uh, acid different from another one is usually or uh, dependent on the R group you are dealing with. Okay. So what will make what? This so 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 and so amino acid to be different from so 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 and so amino acid will depend largely on what what is what this arrow group. Okay, so if this arrow group is so 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 and so, what is it? Okay, if this arrow group is so so and so, what it is? Okay, so now it will depend on what on the R group. The R group will what will largely determine okay the what the amino acid you are what talking about or you are dealing with. So. So what talk about different types of what amino acids? We will first of all what be what talking about what the 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 R group. What is this R group? Okay. So now let us go ahead. Let's say for example this R group is what is H. Okay. If this R group here is H, okay, it has a name. The amino acid has a name. If this R group here is H, it is called what glycine. It is called what glycine. If this R group is what is H, okay, it is glycine. I've told you that what that to, 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 to know the type of amino acid you are dealing with, it will largely depend on what on the R group that is present here. So if this if this R group is what is H, it is called it is called what a glycine. Now, if this R group is what, let's say C H3, C H. CH3. Okay. If this arrow group is what CH, CH, okay, three, CH, CH3. Okay. This one we do not call it what a glycine this time. Instead, we call it what a valine. Okay. A valine. V A L I N E. Okay. We call it what a valine. A va an amino acid having the arrow group CH3. 2CH is what now a valine. Okay, as you can see, this CH3 you can simply write it like this CH3 to CH. Okay, so it's what is a valine. A valine is an essential amino acid. Okay, it's a what for making what energy. Okay, it's an essential amino acid. It is not produced by the body. Instead, you can get it from what from 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 protein sources like meat, like fish. Okay, you can get it from uh, from dairy products and so on and so forth. Okay, so valine is what it's an essential amino acid, and it is got in when what the arrow group. In our amino acid is what is CH3, CH, CH3, or CH3 to CH. Okay, so there are many other type of what amino acid we can also encounter. What about if the arrow group is CH2OH? If the arrow group is CH2OH, this one is called what a serine. All right. Now sometimes we will talk about polar polarity. That is polar and non-polar. Okay, now for polar and non-polar bonds, what makes us say a bond is polar and what makes us say a bond is non-polar? Okay, now if the bond is made up of only hydrogen and carbon, okay, we say it is what? It is non-polar, all right? We say that bond is what? It's non-polar, okay? So when what? The bond is made up of only what? Hydrogen and carbon, okay? We say it is what? It is non-polar. But if it's made up of anything like what? Oxygen, okay? Hydrogen, carbon, now have oxygen, okay? Then, of course, it is what now? It is polar, all right? So this one is non-polar because it's made up of hydrogen and what? And carbon. So now, serine now, serine, 
this is what serene, okay? This serene will be what? Will it be polar or non-polar? It will be what? It will be polar because it has what oxygen. It is also being bonded to what to oxygen. So it's bonded to carbon, it's bonded to hydrogen, but it's also bonded to what to oxygen. So for that reason, this is what a polar what amino acid. So we have polar amino acid, we have non-polar amino acid, we have acidic amino acids. Okay, so depending on what on their polarity, on what the arrow group is, on the polarity of the what of the r group okay if the r group is what is polar then of course we're going to have a polar amino acid if the r group is non-polar we're going to have a non-polar amino what acid so let's continue so this is serine or was serine i anyhow you will pronounce it if the word the arrow group is what ch2oh so if this arrow group is not ch2oh let's say it is ch2cooh ch2 C O O H. Okay, if this arrow group is what C H two C O O H, what will you call it? You call this one what aspartic acid. You call this one what aspartic acid. Okay, when the arrow group is C H two C O O H, you call it what aspartic aspartic what acid. And of course, is this one polar or non-polar? As you can see very well, it is what it is what polar because it's also it's also bonded to what to oxygen here. Yeah. So this is what an acidic amino acid. Okay, it's an acidic amino acid. It's bonded to what C H two C O O H, which is called what aspartic what acid aspartic acid so what if it is not bonded to ch2 coo let's say it's bonded with ch2 uh nh3 okay ch2 nh3 okay if it is bonded to what ch2 nh3 like this if the arrow group is ch2 4 nh3 what we call this one is lysine we call this one what a lysine, okay? And of course, this is also is it is it polar or non-polar? Obviously, there it is what it is polar, okay? It is polar because it's also bonded to what to nitrogen. All right, so for that reason, it's what it's polar. So this is what lysine, and this is a basic, it's a base, okay? So it's a basic what amino acid. It's a basic amino acid. So we have looked at what some bonded to H say glycine, bonded to what uh, CH3, CH. CH3, we say that one is what is your valine. We talk about CH2, COOH. We say that one is what is aspartic acid. Let's say if you want, if you have one that is bonded to, let's say, uh, to uh to an aromatic compound, okay, an aromatic comp compound like this. Let's say it's bonded to CH2. Okay, let's say we have what an aromatic compound like this. Okay, it's bonded to what something like this. All right. So if it's bonded to water, an aromatic water compound like this, all right, then of course this will be an aromatic amino acid. All right. So now this will now be called something like what phenyl aniline. Okay, this is called what phenyl what aniline. So if it's what bonded to what to an aromatic compound, okay, it will call what and it will, it will be an aromatic an aromatic amino acid. All right. So if bonded to CH2 plus a benzene ring like this, it is called what phenyl was and in line. So please take note of what of all of this. Now, those are just what, by the way, to make us just understand what the different types of amino acid that we have and how they are formed. Okay, so we form amino acid or we classify amino acid based on what on their arrow groups. Okay, so what is what is that arrow group? What is it? Now another thing I didn't talk about, and of course, if you notice very well here, you see that what this carbon here is it chiral? Yes, it's a chiral carbon. Okay, because it is bonded to what four different what groups? Bonded to COH, bonded to what CH2. Whether to what NH2, whether to what to H. So this is what is a chiral what carbon. Okay. So now let's talk about what the bonds, the bonds formation. Okay, how are bonds formed? Okay, in what? In uh in amino acid. If we have two amino acids, okay, if two amino acids what react, okay, if two amino amino acids are what are joined together, okay, what happens is we observe what to call dehydration. Dehydration reaction synthesis or dehydration synthesis reaction. Okay, we say we observe what we call dehydration synthesis 
reaction. Okay, so when two amino acids are what are uh, linked together or they are joined together, what happens is what dehydration synthesis or reaction. By dehydration, mean that what the water molecule, the water molecule is what is removed. So we are moving what water molecule from the reaction. Now let us see what uh, let us see two amino acid what are reacting together. So we have what something like this. You have your C, all right. Say here you have your NH two, maybe. Then here you have what your R. Here you have your H. Then here you have your C. Double bonded to O. Then you have your O H, maybe. Now then we we'll now have another what uh, amino acid on the other side. So now say plus what now. N H two H H okay then I have your your C then I have what your R here yeah your H then I have what your C O O H okay so these are two amino acids that are what that are reacting together let me put this H here to depict what I really want to show you if this H is here plus okay so these are two amino acids you can see they are the same this group is the same thing as this group two amino acid what reacting together so what you say is that oh, that's what a dehydration what that like that dehydration synthesis reaction or cause okay water will be removed now if you look at this now dehydration will occur here this what well, this hydrogen and water and this uh, and this hydrogen, okay, we join together to form water and to be dehydrated, okay. That is why that is the cause of what of the name dehydration synthesis reaction. The water of what will be removed. If the water has been removed from this reaction, let us see. Follow up closely. So if we remove the water from this reaction, H plus OH is what is H two O. All right. So what will now be left is what there is here. Okay, we're not going to have what now. Uh, Okay, uh, this bonded, this, this will not be one bond now. All right, so now water has been removed from the reaction. What will be left is what? What will be seen is what is this one? This is what will not be what? What will not be seen? Okay, I'm going to go C, C, O, N, what? H. Okay, and what? What? What is uh, the functional group? What, what, what homologous series have what this functional group? Okay, what family of what organic compounds have CONH as what? As the what, as a functional group, you will see that what it is amides. Amides what have what this functional group, okay? So please take note of that. So when uh, uh, two amino acids react together, the hydration synthesis reaction of course, water is removed. And what, is, what happens is what? It results to the formation of what we call a peptide bond. A peptide would bond, okay? So when two amino acids react together or they are joined together, all right, the hydration synthesis reaction occurs, water is removed, it results to the formation of a peptide bond, okay? It results to the formation of what? Of a peptide bond. And this peptide bond, okay, is what? Is the amide word functional word group. So the amide functional group is what? Is the peptide word bond. Is the peptide bond. So peptide bond is the bond that is found, okay, in what? In protein what? Molecules, okay? It is bond that is found in what? In amino acids. So please take note of what? Of that. Peptide or bond is the, for, the bond that is found in what in protein what molecules, all right? And of course, the amide functional group, okay, is the what is the peptide bond. You must take note of that very well. So proteins that contains peptide bond, all right, which is based on the amino, well, which which is the based on what on the amide functional group. Proteins contain peptide bond, which is based on the what? On the amide functional group. You must take note of what of all of this. So peptide bond is necessary. So we saw what a question that has to do with what? With, uh, with bonds, okay? Uh, with bonds found in amino acids. So uh, 2023, number 19 from the Hotel School Jam CBT practice app. So what type of bond links amino acids together in a protein chain? A is a covalent bond, B is a hydrogen bond, C is a ionic bond, D is a peptide bond. Correct answer there is what? Is peptide bond. All right. So in the next class, what we're going to be doing, we're going to talk about what? The test for what? For protein. I'd love to see you there. Thank you for watching and thank you for staying put. See you in that episode.